Prepare to shatter their skies with some steel rain. Let's talk basilisk manticores and wyverns, and how the artillery for the guard is shaping up in the new codex. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking more guard leaks, and I thought we'd focus on another important area of the codex, in the artillery. Perhaps one of the three most iconic things about guard, alongside the infantry and the tanks. Generally in 9th edition, Games Workshop seems to like pricing barrage units in a way that makes them a bit of a luxury, something that you can't afford to just spam artillery and just hoover your opponent off the board, which does seem like a sensible thing for game balance points of view, but I certainly think it's on the guard player's wish list to have usable artillery as one core part of the codex. With that in mind, I thought it could be fun to take a look at the release rules for the Basilisk, Manticore and Wyvern, and see how they're shaping up from an initial impression of their guns. Again, as always, to credit the initial source for these leaks and rumours, a big shout out to Mordian Glory. Certainly check out his awesome guard channel if you haven't already. It's very good of him to share all this leaks knowledge of the Codex, and give us a bit more of an idea as to what to expect when Codex Astra Militarum eventually hits the shelves. Normal disclaimer as well, that things might change a little bit by the time that the final Codex publishes. As normal, these are from leaks playtester copies of the Codex, so things might change a bit by the time the final book comes out, but I do suspect the majority of it should be fairly accurate. Taking a look at the datasheets then, first up we have the Iconic Basilisk, always a slightly hilarious vehicle to be fielding on the battlefields of the 41st millennium. From the look of the thing, it should probably be really quite a long way behind the lines rather than fighting as a frontline vehicle, but I think we'd miss these iconic artillery pieces if we weren't able to field them. Apparently in the new version of the Codex, the Basilisk will be going up in points, 140 points rather than the 125 points it is now. It looks like the aim is to make it a bit more equivalent to the Manticore in terms of raw hitting power. The stat line for the artillery vehicles has been made a bit more similar to each other. It looks like they all get the same profile now at a 10 inch move. Hitting on 4s at range, strength 6 and toughness 7, 11 wounds and a 3 plus save. It's fairly minimal changes to how it is currently. It means that the Basilisk and the Wyvern gain the toughness 7 that they had toughness 6 before, but they do lose a little bit of movement going down from 12 to 10. Not exactly the biggest deal though, and it still means that they can reposition surprisingly quickly if they want to and somehow keep that massive gun firing while they scoot around the board. The most interesting bit to me is the new profile for the Earthshaker cannon. It does retain its crazy 240 inch range. Always good if you want to hit something on the next table over, I suppose. Previously, it had a 2d6 and dropped the lowest for the number of shots. That's gone up to d6 plus 3, which is a big upgrade. And its hitting power has risen to strength 10, AP3 and damage 2 with the blast keyword. With average rolling, you could usually expect around about 4 or 5 hits out of the Basilisk normally. It now goes up to around about 6 or 7, depending on your roll. So on average, you've gained 2 more shots compared with previous, and they'd be hitting at the highest strength of 10, which is kind of relevant for a few targets, Toughness 5 and Toughness 9, which is seeing a few more appearances than it was before. I think the damage 2 versus the damage D3 is a bit of a side grade. It'll mean that it's extra good at killing things like Space Marines, but a bit more lackluster against things like Terminators or anything with minus one damage. Overall though, regardless of the damage and the extra strength, in general, in terms of per points, you will get around about 30% more extra hits per point. Six or seven shots is just a lot more impressive than four or five. Overall, I'd say that this looks like an improvement despite the points increase, although admittedly from those leaked tank ace traits, it does appear that we might well be losing the full payload upgrade that you could get for one CP. Definitely a bit of a downside, but I suppose at least you can save that CP for something else useful. Overall though, I'd broadly say it's an improvement for the points, but it perhaps looks like it's got a few more targets that it might be struggling against. Moving on, the Manticore is apparently now a very similar price to the Basilisk, 145 points as opposed to the Basilisk 140, but minus 10 compared with the cost that it is currently. The stat line is apparently the same as the Basilisk, it already had the toughness 7 before, so that's a bit less of an upgrade for it, and again it's just a little bit slower than it was previously. The Storm Eagle rockets, for the cheaper cost, do seem like they're a bit less of an obvious direct upgrade. They're now going to be 120 inches apparently, with heavy d6 plus 3, strength 9, AP minus 2, but a flat damage 3, and the blast keyword. It does mean that the rockets will be dropping from strength 10 down to strength 9, again really just relevant on toughness 9 and toughness 5 normally. And previously each rocket would give you 2d6 shots. That would be an average of 7, compared with the average of 6.5 that you'd be getting out of this new profile. Admittedly though, D6 plus 3 is a lot less swingy than 2D6. At least you don't have the bad chance of getting very unlucky and rolling snake eyes, and basically getting almost no damage for the turn. 
On the other hand though, trading out the damage D3 for the big damage 3 is a pretty decent upgrade, and you don't have to pay the CP privilege for full payload anymore. And for that reason, when accompanied by a slightly cheaper points cost, I do feel that the Manticore's probably stronger overall again. A few less shots, but a lot more reliable. The strength debuff won't hurt that much, and upgrading to damage 3 without the command point is pretty nice. We'll compare the damage output versus the Basilisk in just a second. Finally for the artillery tanks, we have the Wyvern. I will just address this because I'm sure people will comment it down in the comments, but apparently Mordian Glory said that one of his sources said that it might well be removed from the codex. I'm honestly almost certain that his source must have been getting mixed up about something. The Wyvern's a really recent plastic kit from Games Workshop for the guard comparatively, there's absolutely no reason that they'd have to retire it. Occasionally they pull some niche options from codexes, things like older fine cast models, but they never ever do that with a recent plastic kit. I'm absolutely certain that we will still have it in the codex when the book releases. Perhaps the fact that we've actually got a leaks profile for this also seems to go with that. Apparently the Wyvern would have a cost of 130 points, a little bit cheaper than previously. And again, like the Basilisk, we'll be gaining plus one toughness and losing two inch worth of movement. The Stormshard Mortars look like they might be getting a bit of a side grade. 48 inch range, heavy 46 as before, and strength 5 AP minus one damage one, but losing the full rerolls to wound that they have in the current version. Going up to strength 5 and AP minus one, both are pretty decent but AP-1 is just a little bit less reliable than it used to be, seeing as if you're playing against Armour of Contempt armies, they're basically not going to care. Broadly speaking, it looks like the damage output will be relatively similar if they do choose to do this, comparing just versus a few typical targets, if you were taking aim at some traitor guardsman or something, then you kill around about four of them, either with the old or the new profile. If you target some space marines, then you do get a little bit less damage, 1.55 wounds versus 1.77 with the old profile, that's mainly just due to the armour of contempt, and it will be a little bit less efficient against things like, say, a toughness 7 vehicle, 1.17 dealt versus 1.29. The numbers are all fairly similar, I do feel that those targets might not be optimal for the new profile as well, it might be a bit better against things like, say, Necron Warriors in cover without armour of contempt, or against things that are toughness 8, it'll shave off a few more wounds compared with the old profile. Overall though, either way it does seem really quite similar. Unlike perhaps the Basilisk and the Manticore, it doesn't look like it's getting any significant power boost to its main weapons. The damage profile does seem round about the same, which probably isn't the best news for it, as it's not exactly a particularly common choice in guard armies at the moment. People tend to go for the Basilisks or the Manticores to be able to crack things like power armour, as well as just take out light infantry. Really to see how good it is, we will have to take it in context of any boss that it can get, but I can't help but think that things like mortar heavy weapon teams are probably still going to outcompete this thing, particularly if you do have access to efficient orders like that take aim one. Overall my guess would be that if this profile does wind up being accurate, then the Wyvern is still going to remain a pretty niche choice in the new codex. Finally, just because I like doing a little bit of math hammer, I thought it could be interesting to see the Basilisk stats versus the Manticore against a few targets. They get the same number of shots, so it's extra strength and AP, versus less AP, but damage 3. If the leak stats do turn out to be correct, then they're going to be the same on light infantry, as they won't care either way. Technically, the Basilisk will win slightly on that one, as it's a bit cheaper. Against Space Marines with 2 wounds, as expected, the Basilisk wins out fairly handily, 1.8 wounds dealt versus 1.4. But versus heavier targets, things like Terminators, Toughness 7 vehicles, or say a hard target like a Toughness 8 vehicle with a 5 plus invul and minus 1 damage, then in all of those cases, the Manticore with its big 3 damage does win out. Overall, I'd say that for that reason, just based on these leak stats, the Manticore looks more tempting at the moment, though of course there might be other things that sway you one way or the other once we do know the full codex with all the synergies. Admittedly, there is also the one advantage of the Basilisk in that it can fire on round 5, where the Manticore will have used all its rockets. So between that and being a bit cheaper and good against certain targets, the Basilisk might still have a place, even if there isn't anything else to sway you in its favour. Overall though, based on these stats alone, I would guess that the Manticore might still win out a bit. So anyway, let me know what you think of the leaks profiles. Overall, it does look like the Basilisk and Manticore have both gained a little bit of raw power. I'd guess that Guard will keep their exemption to that barrage nerf that came out in the balanced data slate, and it does look like with artillery with this kind of threat, you could easily include multiple in a list and not feel bad. Probably they're still going to be a niche part of the army, as opposed to things that you just spam for days. Back them up with some rotters and infantry to hold the line and deal some direct damage, and it looks like you'll be having a good time. I'd argue that the Wyvern still isn't looking particularly strong, and I feel like mortars might still outcompete it, even with the extra strength and AP, but let me know what you think down in the comments. 
In any case, if you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics. I'll be hoping to look at a few other guard data sheets over the next few days. And as mentioned, certainly check out Mordian Glory for the original source for all this. His channel is pretty epic for guard players. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well. You can find that link down in the video description if you'd like to help support. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, including seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with the chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, an absolutely massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.